A pleasant day to everyone. I am Christian J. Asena and I am with my co-reporter, Tracy M. Barillano, to give you valuable lessons in finance. In our discussion today, we will be learning the financial system in the Philippines. But before we formally start, let's find out the objectives of the lesson. Number one is for us to know the importance of a financial system in a country's economy. Number two, what roles does of each elements play in the financial system? And number three, how did the current Philippine financial system come to be? Well, in any matter, without a proper system, the lives of people can be unorganized and it can cause disruptions, mismanagement, and the worst thing may happen is chaos. So that's why we need a system for us to be structured properly, same as well in the financial system of the Philippines. The banking and finance sector performs a very critical function as it is primarily responsible of domestic savings and turning these funds into a productive investments, the fiscal policies and the transactions that are happening in our country. It enables financial intermediation process which facilitates the flow of funds between savers, investors, borrowers, and other entities. Thus, it ensures that financial resources are allocated properly and efficiently and promoting towards economic development goals. The financial system of the Philippines Philippines is comprised of various institutions that manage and maintain fairness in the financial services and transactions, namely the central bank, banking and non-banking institutions, investment firms, insurance companies, both public and private financial institutions, and among others. The Philippine financial system was also influenced by the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and other multinational banks. Well, it is because of the system approach and the history of it from the 1970s onwards. The World Bank and the IMF contributed a lot to the Philippines through loans, institution building, trainings, and to create more sophisticated dual economy with the modern approach. The Philippine financial system manages and reducing the risk of money being used for money laundering, terrorist financing, and as a conduit for funding weapons of mass destruction. We are now in the functions of a financial system. Well, it makes us more flexible to transact and participate in the economic growth and development of our country through these following four processes. Number one is savings. As already stated, public savings find their way of those in production through financial system. These funds are in the hands of producers resulting in better goods and services and an increase in the society's living standards. When saving flows declines, it indicates that the growth in investment and living society standards begin to fall. These are the savings programs as well of the government and the other financial institutions. Number two is liquidity. Liquidity is a fundamental to the well-being of financial institutions, particularly banking and investment institutions. It indicates the growth and development of banks as it ensures proper working of financial markets. And it also refers how easily assets can be bought or sold. Number three is payment. Retail payment systems and services consist of different platforms and institutions that allows individual, government entities, and firms to transfer money on a daily basis without having to use cash. Number four is risk focuses on the risk managing function of the financial system that reallocates resources from savers to investors, monitoring corporate control, and facilitates trading, hedging, and diversifying, and balances financial development and resources to attain stability. Policy-driven purpose helps to attain economic stability and sustainability. Good morning everyone, I am Tracy M. Barilliano. So let's proceed to the elements of financial systems. The following components of a financial system work together to provide proper and efficient money distribution or smooth allocation of funds. Number one, financial claims. These funds are those that the investor is entitled to receive in uncertain circumstances. Financial claims can either be debts which are money borrowed and are to be paid as an obligation and equities which are claims of ownership in an income generating institution such as shares and stocks. Number two, financial institutions. These are institutions either public or private whose primary source of assets is claims. Number three, financial markets. Markets provide 
for quick transactions so that the claims can be processed. Um, number four, government agencies, the Monetary Board of the Central Bank oversees monetary laws in the Philippines. Number five, laws and policies. This element of the financial system is regulated by the government and therefore affects the whole economy depending on how strict the regulations are put in place. Throughout the course of the country's history, the Philippines had to go through numerous distinct advances and adjustments before developing the organized financial system it has today. So, let's discuss the brief timeline of the development of the Philippine financial system. 1754, the Obras Pias or Pius Work was founded by Father Juan Fernandez de Leon and was the country's first lending institution. 1764, the Rodriguez Bank was founded by Francisco Rodriguez. 1851, Banco Español Filipino de Isabela II established as the country's first bank. 1869, the opening of the Suez Canal increased Philippine trade with other countries. 1873, branches of Chartered Bank of India, Australia, and China were built in Manila. 1882, British banks were in charge of the economy during the height of Spanish colonization. Nonetheless, Spain was able to establish their first bank in the Philippines, the Monte de Piedad. 1988, if you can still recall, following the signing of Treaty of Paris, the Paine Aldrich Act allowed the free trade between the United States and the Philippines. 1902, the Philippines branch of the International Banking Corporation of New York was established. However, the National City Bank of New York purchased it in 1915. 1904, the Postal Savings Bank was established. 1906, the Philippine government's first agricultural bank was established. Ten years later, it would be transferred to the newly founded Philippine National Bank. 1920s, Chinese banks were built in the Philippines. 1942, the Philippine National Bank was forced to close as a result of Japanese colonization, but it quickly reopened under Japanese military control. Also, during the Japanese period, war notes were circulated, resulting to the worst inflation in history. 1946, the Rehabilitation of Finance Corporation was established to offer rehabilitation to the war damage industry. It eventually evolved into the Development Bank of the Philippines. And finally, 1948, the Central Bank of the Philippines was created. The structure of the Philippine financial system is dominated by a banking system. It allows the option to take debts and buy bonds or stocks. So under the banking institutions is private banking institutions or personalized banking for people with high net worth. Commercial banking institution, number one, expanded commercial banks or universal banks, and number two, ordinary commercial banks. Commercial banks consist of big banks na mayroong malaking capital. So, as a result, may kakayahan silang makapagbukas ng iba't ibang branch sa buong Pilipinas. Best example nito, yung BDO and Bank of the Philippine Islands. Thrift banks, the thrift banking system is composed of savings and mortgage banks, private development banks, stock savings, and loan association. Rural banks, its role is to promote and expand the rural economy in an orderly and effective manner by providing the people in rural communities with basic financial services. Lastly, government banking institutions, from the word itself, these are owned by the government, such as Philippine National Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, Land Bank of the Philippines, Philippine Amana Bank. We are now in the non-bank financial institution. A non-bank financial institution is a financial institution does not have a full banking license and cannot accept deposits from the public. However, these non-bank financial institutions do facilitate alternative investments, risk pooling, financial consulting, money transmission, and check cashing. Investment houses, investment companies, financing companies, securities and brokers, non-stock savings and association, buildings and loan associations, pawn shops, lending investors, fund managers, trust companies, insurance companies, and venture capital corporations. And these are the government non-bank financial institutions. Government Service Insurance System or GSIS and Social Security System or SSS. I hope it helps a lot. Thank you for listening and God bless us all.